When I went through Mermaid Adventures, the animated version of H2O, I had a few people comment that they actually liked it. Which, understandable. It wasn't for me, and I mentioned it a few times that I just didn't like the show. When I rewatched the original H2O, I just said water, my childhood rushed back to me so quickly. Hell, maybe the animated show is just like this for other kids who are now grown up. I don't know. Wasn't for me. So, I decided to do this to see how similar some of the stuff kind of is. Let's do a versus. I'm also going to emphasize this. If you like the animated one, that's fine. There are times where I actually liked some of the character development. Some of the episodes had cool concepts like the giant flying bubble, water bubble thing around town. Or the episode where Cleo forgets that she's a mermaid. Or when Ricky was stuck as a mermaid and her father had to look for her. It was a genuinely caring moment. And I appreciate what it tried to do. But it's not for me. I have to emphasize this. This is not for me. I didn't care for it. And there are two other series that did a little bit better. And by a little, I mean a lot. A lot better. But a few things before we continue. In the animated review, I couldn't say Cleo. I said Chloe. And I apologize for that fuck up. And I do believe I did put it in the description as well. Because whenever I said it, I didn't go back to see if I had said it correctly or not. And that's my own fuck up. And I also forgot that Miriam was the quote unquote bad guy of the first season. And that was because I remembered Charlotte more. And when I watched the original, I did remember that there were some episodes that did involve around Miriam more than I thought. And also, Charlotte is from season 2, which, that's when I got more into the show. Do you remember the one episode where Miriam was almost killed by Emma? Yeah, remember that? In episode 15, Miriam tries to get Emma and Ricky fired by making all the products go bad in the freezer by turning the temperature down. So Emma freezes it back up, and by that I mean she freezes everything and Miriam, which leads Ricky to defrost her. Like... Why couldn't we have this episode in the animated version? <laughs> like, no, I kind of forgot even that was a thing until rewatching this. Like, excuse me? PG-13, my ass. <laughs> Murder is now PG-13. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> to be fair, both things songs are kind of similar, which I didn't catch until I rewatched it. I'm going to keep saying until I rewatched it. Oh, until I rewatched it. Because... I rewatched it. <laughs> That's just me. And kind of going around where we have another character meetup. Zane. In the first one, it's a little different how we met him. In the second, we don't really get to know who he is. All we know is that he's just the wealthy son of a businessman. And Marion's lover, maybe, for a bit. To be fair, the animated show didn't really go into him. Just that they were both kind of bullies. But, I mean, I want to address the issue I had with some of the characters looked. Well, I don't really care how some of them look. I mean, the animated one, I'm sure they're going to have changes. But Ricky and Emma switched places with how they looked. And I'm just kind of confused why. I want to also add a few things. So I can't do an actual, actual full review of both of them because of two things. One, H2O Out of Water has 26 episodes for all three of their seasons, which leads one season out of the animated version. And the animated version actually has, for season 1, 13 episodes, and season 2 has 12. And that's kind of an issue that I had to face with. So I just decided to do three of each episode so we can review, and later on I'll do H2O Just Said Water version later. I don't know when, don't hold me to that. With that being said, let's get to reviewing with these two side by side of H2O Just Said Water and H2O Mermaid Adventures. So the beginning of the animated version did have them as friends, saving the hermit crab, and then Cleo having a job interview where Lewis comes by, and she fails her job interview. While this is going on, Ricky goes to help Emma train for her times in swimming. In the Just Add Water version, it's kind of different. We meet Emma and Cleo, who is helping to take her times for her swimming. Cutting away, we meet Zane, who tricks Cleo into helping out with the boat because she's afraid of water. She's pushed out towards open water. And this is where we also meet Ricky. She just sort of jumps into the boat. Now that's a character introduction. Ricky actually stole a spark plug from Zane's boat. So this is a good time to nanny to use it to drive around. And they pick up a wandering Emma. 
Ricky decides it's a good idea that they should go out to the sea and soon run out of gas. And in front of them is Mako Island. So, um, how's the other one doing right now? So by this point, Cleo fails her interview, and Lewis asks the boss to give her another chance, and does. So to get her better equipped with the animals around the area, they go to Mako to see what's around. So, kind of close, but needing to go forward towards Mako, and funny enough, both boats are broken, and they have to stay there for the time being. Here's the difference, though. While Mako was a huge deal besides being the reason to turn them into mermaids, in the animated version, it's a bunch of sea life that's around it. There's really no reason why people don't hang out there more often because the whole place was a boat city. It kind of was just like an island that was in the foreground to be out in the open seas. In the Just Add Water version, it was a dangerous place to go. We're introduced to the fact that our, there are sharks around in overgrown reefs that can damage boats, so most can go near it. Both as well deal with the fact that there are no cell phones saying no, so must go to higher ground. Oh, and another thing. Emma and Ricky hated each other in the Out of Water series. Like, from the get-go, after, like, realizing that they're out of oil or out of fuel. One was a goody two-shoes, while the other was a rebel badass girl who couldn't be stopped, really. So, their two characteristics kind of clashed. Anyway, so in the animated one, we see that Lewis has fallen. Didn't I mention that he isn't in this yet? I didn't mention that he's in this yet. So why the fuck is he here? Whatever. The girls see one of the tunnels had some sort of light going through it, and they go inside and figure out that they can't get back up, and the only option is through the moon pool. They jump into the water to see if they can find an opening where the moon lands on them, turning them into mermaids. While the out-of-water version, Cleo actually couldn't make the jump onto the other rocks and falls into the hole on the side while the others soon follow, realizing they can't get back up and find the moon pool. Also, it's clearly midday when this happened, and it suddenly turns to night, like... <clears throat> but Emma figures out that the moon pool is connected to the ocean, as the others follow. But Cleo can't swim, so the others say that they'll help her get out of the moon pool, and whenever the moon goes over the pool, bubbles begin to form for a bit. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, the animated one had you beat there for showing what the moon can actually do. Yet. But thankfully, they all get out alive and are captured by the Coast Guard. In both series. That's just pretty funny to me. Now, in the anime one, they do escape out of the ocean and climb onto some rocks, which is conveniently daylight out. And Lewis is awake to see that they are mermaids, and the Coast Guard arrives, aka Cleo's dad, and they have legs again. They do that weird stretch thing, and it seems like the legs are formed and separated, yada, yada, yada. So, whenever they come home, they're basically yelled at, and water wants them dead. I'm not kidding. Emma's splashed by a jet ski and turned into a mermaid. Cleo is washing her hands when she turns, and Ricky is splashed by her brother, who knocks over a glass. The out-of-water version is pretty similar. Emma transforms when she's out swimming in the ocean. Cleo is taking a bath and transforms, which I guess it's in, like the animated one, so bathroom scene while Ricky is sprayed by a sprinkler what's the difference though again the girls were on their own yeah Lewis isn't until later and even then how could they trust anyone the people we see in the first few minutes of the first episode they're rude as hell so why the hell wouldn't they tell anyone also yeah I'm not gonna be a lab experiment for the rest of my life the animated version has them automatically come to Lewis because nerd of the group and they figure out that their powers are, which Cleo can control water, Ricky can use fire, and Emma ice. Yeah, episode out of the water version, only two of them find out that they have powers and it's used in such funny ways. He asks them to take samples of the water and they go over there, talk to animals they wish were plushies for this whole show, and figures out that the moon pool is the reason why they're like that. And no. It's never given how or why the Steve Irwin killer knows, and she's never given any character development to be like, other than that she's the medium Steve Irwin killer. While the other one has them totally stumped, not knowing what the hell they're gonna do, they meet up at Cleo's place, and they figure out that when they touch water for 10 seconds, they turn into mermaids. But we don't get to discuss more because Lewis comes over to help Cleo with biology, and she nearly gives away her secret by asking if Lewis knows about mermaids. Emma and Ricky take advantage of the situation and go for a swim, while the girls kind of become closer in a sort of way. Which, again, they hated each other, now having this power makes them come closer. That's different from the animated version.
Cleo finds Lewis at the Juicy Bar looking up stuff about mermaids. They talk a little bit about it outside while Zane finds them on his moped. He interrogates Cleo because the police said his boat was brought out there and Lewis roasts him for having daddy issues. And Cleo uses her newfound powers to be used on a fire hydrant that nearly launches this bitch into the side of the water. Cleo goes to show the girls and Emma figures out that she has ice powers. While Ricky complains that she can't figure out her powers yet, they agree to keep this a secret between the three of them and that's the end of episode one. The animated version has them collect the water samples and come back to where Cleo remembers her interview where she passes. They go to the juicy bar place thing. I don't know. It's a place. They had second thoughts about turning back to humans, even though I wouldn't have second thoughts. And they joke about it being the law of nature. And they laugh to the end credits. Now for the second episode. The animated version is short. Yeah, I, um, whenever I review this the first time, I think I either got bored or I literally gave Jack shit about this because I kind of I kind of have hardly anything for that. And I was kind of at a loss, so I guess we'll start with the out of water version. And here we go. We're first introduced to Emma who is going in for a bath, but you may call me a perv. You may call me a perv. But she just takes her pants off and the next thing she's in the tub as a mermaid. So, did she just take her pants off and keep her shirt on? We literally know you transformed to a tail in a custom brawl with the tail, so... What? Then we cut to Cleo, who's cleaning her fish tank with gloves, but gets them wet and transformed. And Ricky's just swimming with dolphins. Life is good with these girls! The anime version has Cleo at her job, which I believe is an aquarium or something like SeaWorld. And as luck would have it, Miriam, the mayor's daughter, is going to be there as Cleo is to show her around. Back to the live action, Cleo was freaking out about how much their lives are kind of ruined by being mermaids and wants to tell someone, but the girls say not to. And funny enough, again, Miriam is having a pool party and gets mention of Byron, who is a surfer, and oh god, she has a crush on him. (sighs) I always forget how crushes in these shows are just... Like, flipping paper in a notebook. Oh my god. I, I... How could I have forgot Byron, the surfer dude, the guy with the curly hair? Oh wait, because nothing happens with him. The anime version kind of drifts away from the plot with Miriam a bit and goes towards Ricky and Emma out on the beach where sand sculpture competition was being held. Her brother, who is in this competition, tells him that his friend is grounded and he can't do it. So Emma decides to help. We cut back to Miriam and Chloe as they help out an injured turtle that soon goes to the water and heads to the ocean because Miriam didn't try and help the turtle get back up onto the the little deck there and just opens the door for it to be murdered. And Ricky has to come and save it. Live action one. Emma and Ricky tried to test out their abilities with being mermaids and it doesn't work well. Then Lewis comes out and the scene follows. We're naked, Lewis. Rated PG. We later cut to them using their powers and bitching and Ricky leaves because she's tired of hearing them complain. The animated version takes us back to the same sculpture competition where Emma now joins the search for the turtle and Kim, Cleo's younger sister, is there and asks to help Emma's brother. She doesn't, but moving on. Cleo, her boss, and Miriam go out to the boat to look for the turtle. While they're out there, Miriam gets seasick and accidentally lowers one of the ropes, capturing Ricky. While she's being saved by Emma, Cleo makes a giant wave come over to distract him as Ricky's free and the giant wave is gone. The turtle is told to trust people on the boat and is taken to be healed up. Back at the beach, Ricky's brother isn't getting help from Kim and Emma's like, I'll help you now. And they finish up the scan sculpture where they lose and give a disturbing peace sign and they laugh and it's fade to black. Hey, Also in those 9 minutes of the live action, NOTHING HAPPENS IN THE ANIMATED ONE! Someone please argue with me why I watched 10 minutes of a spoiled rich girl be pampered by Cleo and Ricky chase a sea turtle that almost gets killed 3 fucking times! Please! Someone tell me how this one is so good! Someone argue with me, please! Give me a fucking real description! Someone tell me what you like about this and then I'll argue nine different other reasons that you're wrong so fucking wrong I'm so pissed you just don't even know <laughs> I shouldn't be getting pissed at this because it's a fucking anime show but you know when there's a losing argument and they're still trying to argue it's 
It's it's good and it's wrong. It's bleh. live action one. We cut to Lewis and Chloe where Zane and Byron come by, who look nothing like in their counterparts, and Zane is roasted by Lewis, and they almost fight. Now we're watching this, and Lewis is the guy who, if Cleo or anyone else was in there to watch over him, he probably would have punched someone by now. Cleo says she's going to the party, which, uh, which I mean, you still could have gone if you didn't need to swim. You just need to have worn a swimsuit. Lewis finds Ricky and asks why Cleo's been acting up, and when she know it, she finds out her power is fire as she boils a coke. I mean, she was pissed at Lewis, so good thing she didn't start to boil him to mush. And she tries out her powers again, and a puddle of water on the beach. Is that you guys? Are you naked again? I knew this show was edgy, but not this edgy. The girls tell Lewis to look at the Cleo at the party, and he's like, No, I'm here to fish. Bitch, you get some fish at the party. Now go. Wait, was that a sex joke? Maybe. Not intentional. But now it's intentional. Cleo comes to the party just like she was a grandma for germs and... Why is Zane everywhere? Zane is the villain of the show. Not Miriam. Confirmed. So he throws her into the pool and they leave to go inside. And I'll, actually, I must emphasize that she can't swim. I mean, this pool doesn't look that deep, but she can't swim, so they just left her to drown. Lewis arrives as Cleo's turned into a mermaid. He freaks out for a second before helping her out as Emma and Ricky arrive, telling Lewis that they're mermaids too. Emma freezes the door so Ricky can show off that she is now a human hairdryer and destroyer pools. Like I said, the animated one could have been cut down in half if it wouldn't have been for Miriam wanting a drink and the turtle running into a gag octopus. And I stabbed myself with a pencil. And then we moved on to episode 3. Alright, so these two episodes are kind of similar, so try to carpet up. The animated one starts off with the hermit crab telling the girls that there is another mermaid and that they head only to find a mermaid statue there where they take it to Lewis. And that is when they start having dreams about a blonde-haired mermaid. The live-action version has us with Ricky and Emma, who actually meant to mermaid testing like holding their breath underwater and timing it. You have tails, it should be a long-ass time. Where Cleo is uninterested in anything mermaid-related and tries to be normal, literal mythical beings are now being proved alive and all you care about is calculus, bitch! We later find out from Byron that a sea turtle was caught in a fishing net, and when the girls are arguing, Ricky tells Cleo that the turtles are being caught by her dad's net because he's a fisherman. And to be fair, if you're married, clear you could use this ability to be helping them. She asks her dad, and he avoids her for a bit before giving that he doesn't, but others do. So most likely, he either has done it on accident, or maybe the dish that you're being served right now has some blood of that little octopus. <laughs> Actually, Ricky and Emma take my advice and save a turtle caught in a fisherman's net. They break the news to Cleo that it was from her dad's fishing belt, where she confronts him by doing the parent, I'm not mad at you, I'm just disappointed thing. The animated version continues on at Lewis's place, where we get a story about a ship of the White Mermaid, who was a spirit, and it was the ship's name. I want to make that kind of very clear. The legend goes that the White Mermaid resided in the ship to warn the captain about dangers coming, and died because he didn't heed her warnings. Which leads the girls to think that she's in danger and that they get another dream where the sharks turn into scuba divers. So Lewis finds the location, wait, wasn't it like sunken, meaning it's down in the ocean, meaning where no one has found it? So, um, how did you find this location? Oh, and also his laptop is stolen by the scuba divers, which has the location and the fact that they're mermaids. You gotta love that. They print the location of the wreck in which Cleo follows them and fucks up the computer, and is rightfully captured where the race is on to the sunken white mermaid. Live action Cleo admits that she's afraid of being a mermaid, and Lewis works the shaft, and we cut to later on that night, where it's revealed that her dad isn't always aware of everything caught on the boats, as his member, Eddie, has been in charge at the moment. She figures out they're doing this as well, and follows them using her mermaid-ness. She's trapped by the nets, though, as Ricky and Emma come to the rescue. Cleo tells her dad what's been going on and fires Eddie as Cleo has accepted herself as now being a mermaid. Animated time! The scuba divers and the group arrive at the same time, even though the group went first. But that doesn't matter as they nearly crash into each other, and it's every man for themselves. The group finds the wreck along with its riches, where the scuba divers basically get their asses handed to them and nearly die, like... For real, like two of them lose their oxygen tanks underwater. 
like deep underwater. And the White Mermaid is placed into its original pose, where the statue gives a creepy smile and in the third episode. I do like the animated one. It does do some things different, but also many episodes revolve around saving the ocean, which is which the Out of Water series does as well. Don't get me wrong, but it has some sort of dire situation to them. Like episode 3 is a good episode, and could have been a good episode to be almost in other series sort of like that. They also thought of a mermaid being. Like, that's cool. More of that, please. I'm trying to be more positive, but I just can't. Like, I was trying to be nice in the comments, but... How? There are shows with no plot, or shows that start out with no plot, but soon, later on, then come to be well-known. The more well-known ones of these is Adventure Time and One Punch Man. You want to know why those are loved? Because they have they have likable characters. They have characters that have weaknesses and that play a part of the story. And they're original. You can find me all you want that these weaknesses in the animated series are somewhere to come to bite them in the ass. But in the live action one, it's more prominent. And I can see it. Cleo's fear of water is shown in the three episodes we just watched. Ricky and Emma's anger is overturned after swimming and Lewis becomes the main character. That, ju- that isn't just one to stick up for Cleo, the first guy who's kind of a dork, and kind of poor fella. And now, tell me, what's the better show? Come on. Like, really. And do not. Do not tell me the similar episodes to the live action one is going to fix it. Yes, some of the episodes are similar, but if I put the anime version's episode next to some pissed on cardboard, you couldn't tell the two apart. Look. I gave this shit a chance. I know people worked on this, but there is worked on, there is inspired from, and then there's thrown away pieces of paper found in the Little Mermaid TV show script and out of the water unused script. I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm not saying both of them are perfect at all. I'm pointing the flaws out in both of them. But when the actual effort is shown in the live action one, then your animated one, where you can make anything, anything happen, then that's fucking sad because... And if anime has taught me one thing, it's live action versions suck and Jiko physics make more sense. We don't question it. To the people that made the animated version, great. But please tell me why. No, seriously. I want to know why because I can't see it. Is it the characters? Is it a non existing plot? Is it the art? Because it's not bad. I've seen worse yet. But it could have been something. I could have. It could have been the next witch. It could have been a ma- the next American Dragon Jake Long. It could have been something. But I really just want to know. What makes this series so good in some people's eyes? Because I can't see it. Really. I want people to tell me. Because this shit pisses me off. Where it's not made to entertain. It's not made to give something. It's not to prove a point. It's not to give away, like some storyline it's not it's just there for colors it's just there to dance around and that shit pisses me off i'm i'm i gotta go i'm getting too pissed off at this show